I wanted to try my hand at the tomb craft that I had been seeing all over Pinterest in the Facebook groups, Google, that kind of thing. They've been around for a few years. So what I'm using guys is a set of this, these standing eggs. Now I've had these for a few years. I picked them up at Hobby Lobby one year when they were uh, clearancing them out. I'm not sure if they still have those, but maybe you can find something similar. I'm also using some brown paper bags that I get from the grocery store. All right. So this is one of the larger ones that is considered the giant uh, paper bag. And so what I did is I just crumpled it up. I, up, I cut off the uh, bottom of it and just using the, um, you know, actual, not the bottom part, but just the actual bag itself. And so then I'm using some Aline's tacky glue and I'm just going to spread this on just kind of like I'm frosting a cake. I know my brain is a little weird, but this kind of worked for me and it's still going strong. I'm going to use it again this year. All right. So then um, what I do is just kind of figure out how I want to wrap this. And so if I have creases, if I have crumples, I'm good because uh, this is a rock and it needs to be, looks that way, looks very rugged. So I do the same thing with the smaller egg I'm using uh, out of this the standing egg pack, I use the large egg as well as the small egg. And so then for the small egg, I crumpled up a regular size bag and doing the same thing with the Aline's Tacky Glue. And then uh, um, the Aline's Tacky Glue, it goes on white, but it dries clear. So I love Aline's Tacky Glue. I've been using it for years and I just, I love it. It's one of my favorite glues. All right, so these wood crosses are some that I had in my stash. I probably got them from Hobby Lobby or Dollar Tree. And so that larger one had a hole in it. So I just uh, covered the hole up with some spackle that I get from the Dollar Tree. So then to stain the crosses, I'm gonna use three crosses, one larger one, and then two smaller ones. And I'm just using some antique wax Y'all have seen me do this many times. If you haven't, I'll just briefly explain. This is antique wax from Hobby Lobby. I mean, no, this is from Walmart. This is a Waverly antique wax. And I just take a baby wipe and I just go around my wooden item and just give it a stain. And I just, it is my favorite way to stain wood items. I love it and I use it most often when I am staining any kind of wood item. I pulled out a couple of tumbling tower blocks that I get from the Dollar Tree and just using that same method of staining uh, just so that everything looked cohesive and looked nice. I'm going to use those tumbling tower blocks to raise up the front of the rock from the back of the rock just for, you know, dimension. All right. So then uh, for the sign, I'm going to hand letter he is risen and uh, I just did up my happy dots and all of that stuff and then I'm going to give it a tattered look by giving the torn edges and I just cut it down a bit just to so that I can handle a little bit better and so I just rip it by tearing toward my body so that it exposes the edge of the paper the look that I'm going for and so then also I add a little white highlight with a, my detailing brush brush to each of the happy dots just to give it a more you know rugged look I just love that I just really feel that it just kind of gives it a high-end look and so I'm using my distress oxide in vintage photo and a finger dauber as well as a q-tip those big q-tips I think I got from Dollar Tree a long time ago and so uh, for more rusticness I just crumpled up the tag just to give it a tattered look then using my distress oxide I am just uh, going in and just kind of going over the uh, kind of bumps and folds and all that stuff in the rocks and so that it kind of gives it all a rugged rustic look and so then for the opening of the cave I am just going to paint a black hole and uh, you know just kind of the size I'm just kind of eyeballing it and just kind of figuring out how big I want it I just put that on there like that. Then once that is dry, I go back and give it a highlight of white paint so that it all looks very nice and rustic. I like to paint splatter my project. So I do that with some black paint as well as some white paint. 
and I always make sure and cover my area because paint splattering is messy. And so then to attach or to kind of set all of this up, I'm using those tumbling tower blocks uh, in between the opening of the rock. And then for the crosses, I'm going to go back and actually add some doodling to the crosses because I just like that look. And so to get them to kind of stand up uh, or kind of be part uh, perched up there on top of the rock I want to make sure that they're secure so I just take a craft stick and just glue that to the back of the crosses so that they are secure on the top of my rock craft stick did not hold up the way that I had envisioned it so what I did later was go back and actually uh, cut a slit in the uh, paper bag and actually glue them to the back of the rocks now what I'm doing is taking some foam dots or some pop dots those are found in the scrapbooking section usually and just raising that up a bit I like dimension uh, it is something that I do for my projects and then uh, to decorate it I just have some of this fine excelsior and uh, I can either find that fine excelsior either at Joanne's craft store or sometimes I can find it at Hobby Lobby and so I just add a bit of that to the bottom of the rock to kind of give it more of a you know kind of just the I guess outdoorsy look and then I'm just taking some small cream and pink tint colored flowers from the Dollar Tree and just adding that to the bottom of the of the rock cave tomb and everything looks just so nice I'm just so pleased with the way that this turned out I'm starting with this uh, antique sewing box. Now this is after my husband's grandmother and so I don't want to compromise it in any way. Uh, so I'm not making this a permanent you know floral arrangement it's just temporary and so that greenery garland came from Walmart and I'm just keeping it intact I just took off the tag and just going to be using U pins uh, to stick it into the styrofoam to position it the way that I want now the three crosses I'm going to use the two smaller ones came from the Dollar Tree the larger one came from Hobby Lobby and uh, I just used my antique wax and a baby wipe just to give it the stain that I like to use uh, for staining my projects all right so then uh, I needed some height so I just pulled out some blocks that I had in my stash so after my son my oldest son from his nursery I just keep them just for little things like this and I like to use glue dots just to tack things down it kind of helps me with you know the things that I don't I, that I want to do on a temporary basis and uh, you can get glue dots anywhere like any adhesive or anything like that is sold and so I use tumbling tower blocks uh, just to get that cross from Hobby Lobby to stand up so that I have these three standing crosses and so then I just start cutting my styrofoam to the size that I need for the box that I had and so I just wanted it to be full enough so that I would have styrofoam to be able to stick U pins in to get all of my greenery down now to give it a more rustic look I had some of this brown uh, moss it's like brown excelsior I think I got this one at Joann's and I I just take my uh, Cricut spatula to help kind of push it down in between you know for the box uh, so that it gets down in there and then the green Spanish moss is from Walmart and so now I'm just putting on my greenery and just using tons of U pins to kind of stick it down I love this greenery garland it is just has all kind of different textures and just different foliage of greenery it just really looks nice and so then also I'll continue to build this um, 
the way that I want. I use those glue dots to, you know, like I said, temporarily, ter temporarily hold my crosses uh, to stand up in there. And then I will continue to add some greenery. I have different textures. I think I have some lamb's ear that I put in here as well as some um, little purple flowers from Hobby Lobby. And then also I use some pit berries and um, I just love the way that this all turned out. If you are new to me, my name is Tracy and I love to share crafty ideas with a bit of rustic country charm. I have tons of videos on my channel and I love to share seasonal crafts. I love to paint. I love to do wreaths. I love to take this and make it out of it. Out of it. I love my happy dots, my paint splatters, my torn edges. I'm a bit old school with my paint splatters. I love my black Sharpie marker. And as I mentioned, if you are looking for something in particular, Click that magnifying glass there on my channel, type in whatever you're looking for, and any video that I've done should pop up uh, in a list and you can go through and maybe find something that you're interested in. I would love to have you as a subscriber and become part of my channel. The wood cross is from the Dollar Tree and the bunny is from a pack from Hobby Lobby. So I stained the sides as well as the back using my favorite method of uh, staining with antique wax. Then I just traced out the bunny on the pink and white scrapbook paper. And then for the cross, I traced out uh, it on the wood grain. Now, both of these are from Hobby Lobby. And so I'm going to use the heat Mod Podge tr uh, transfer method. If you're not familiar with it, I'll just briefly explain. I put a thin layer of Mod Podge on each of the items and let that dry. Then I just use my small iron. I use a Cricut mini press because that is what I have on hand. But uh, any kind of heat source, an iron would work uh, just to get that paper on the cross and then the uh, pink paper on the bunny. Then to add a little distressing, I'm taking my uh, Distress Oxide in Vintage Photo and just adding a bit of brown inking around the edges of the bunny and the cross. Then I take my uh, uh, fine Sharpie marker and add a bit of doodling. I also add some paint splattering because I love that. And I do black first, then I go back and do white. All right, so then to start assembling my can, this can is from Hot Hobby Lobby and I'm uh, showing you I put the handle in the front and uh, I just cut down some styrofoam so that it would fit and then this green moss is from I think that's from Walmart and so then I'm just going to kind of start assembling this uh, the way that I want it to uh, for my cross uh, kind of put that to the side and then just kind of 
draping the greenery around it. I'm using my U pins, uh, which are floral pins, just sticking that into the uh, styrofoam, uh, just to get it the thickness that I want. So I added a tumbling tower block to the back of the bunny so that he would have something or she would have something to stand on. And so then um, that is the way that, that I'm doing that. I added a little bit of this brown uh, moss looking stuff as well. I think that came from Hobby Lobby and that kind of helped that bunny stand up. And so then I'm going to start adding just different florals and greenery. Uh, I think this, these white, uh, flowers came from Walmart and then the pink flowers with a little greenery came from Hobby Lobby. For the tag, I'm using one of these market tags that I've had on hand. Now I coffee stain or tea stained a whole bunch of them at one time and I just keep them in a bag, pull them out or pull one out for projects like this. So then I just hand lettered Silly Bunny. Easter is for Jesus and just using my black Sharpie markers. I add some doodling with my ultra fine Sharpie marker. Uh, these are the ribbons and trims that I'm using for my small messy bow and I just kind of layer them all together until so I like the pattern then to gather them all together I just use a pipe cleaner to get the twist and then uh, to give it a really secure twist so that my bow pops I like to use my needle nose pliers and kind of twist the back so that my bow pops just like that Okay, so then for my tag I uh, like the distress look so I do take my distress oxide in vintage photo and just give it a little bit of distressing so that it really looks you know the country look that I like Thanks for watching and here are a few more videos that you may be interested in. God bless you and we'll see you in the next video.